All right, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking real music in real time for some real people out there just like you right there, just like me. All right, big day for music. Uh, Uriah Heap, Chaos and Color comes out today. I don't have physical product to show you. Go listen to it. If you're a fan of progressive melodic rock, classic rock, um, you won't do much better than the Heap, ladies and gentlemen, who are still around after all this time, if you're a fan of Deep Purple, if you're a little creeped out by their name <laughs> and you'd rather listen to Boston or Kansas or Asia, I get it, you know, <laughs> but Uriah Heep, they're really cool. Eventually, I'm going to get the CD and I will do my usual shtick at the beginning of these videos promoting this great band. Um, speaking of great bands, let's segue Journey. Journey has a Donald Trump problem now, folks. Someone had to do this video. Of course, it's got to be me. Um, you know, I was a guy who, at the beginning of the whole Trump thing, kind of liked it, you know. Um, but now I'm starting to hear and see some things that, well, it's been a couple of years now. But I've started to notice that uh, you need you need humility. You need to admit when maybe you've done something wrong and people respect you for that. If you continuously say, you know, it's the greatest thing the world's ever seen. I've saved millions and billions of lives. And um, it gets, it just gets old. So this is what happens though, when you have politics in the midst of a band who is never political. Now, again, if you're Roger Waters or you're, somebody who's been overtly political your entire career, again, you expect to hear politics and you go because, hey, I really like this guy's politics. I like what he's got to say. I also enjoy the music. So it's uh, two for one or one for two, whatever. And in the case of Roger Waters, people who walk out really ticked off at Roger Waters. I'm like, what did you expect? What did you, what did you expect he was gonna say and do? I mean, this has been what he's done for a very long time. When it comes to Journey, if a specific member like John Cain gets involved in politics, now he could say, well, it's my wife. I'm kind of on the fringe on this. I went to the White House for educational purposes with Arnell, with Ross Valerie. Um, and Neil, by the way, back in the day, if you remember, just went crazy. That's when I was getting involved in all this stuff, and uh, I was called all kinds of names. But then, you know, Neil and I, we've we've kind of made amends to some degree, but he was calling me all the... It was kind of funny um, to some degree. And it was getting me, hey, I always say, bad publicity is publicity. You know, here's a guy with an upstart YouTube channel, lousy production value, just blabbing, and all of a sudden I'm in the midst of it. So it was kind of it was kind of interesting. But I don't think anybody does this the way I do it, which is probably why I don't have you know millions of subscribers <laughs> and millions of views. Um, so you have to like what I do. You have to like the combination of the music stuff along with some of the non-music stuff. And so non-music stuff became really a big focus for Journey once Kane and, and Arnell and Ross went to the White House. And Neil said, look, we're not a political band. And the response was, well, you know, I had this great opportunity to go to the White House and I took it. I have no regrets. By the way, my wife is Donald Trump's spiritual advisor. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to get out of that. Now, for the people who like Donald Trump, they might be more inclined to like Journey more. Gee, I hope Journey does more music uh, that celebrates America and freedom and liberty and blah, blah, blah. Uh, by the way, a lot of people are being duped that that particular person is all about freedom and liberty, the father of Operation Warp Speed, folks. I mean, let's get a grip here, you know? Um, but I understand. Uh, he was a bit different, uh, much rougher around the edges very entertaining. Um, but Journey is all those things too, except maybe they're not that rough around the edges, but they can be, right? So do you want to follow a politician because they're affiliated with a group 
of musicians? Or do you just want to follow musicians and have them not be so vocal about their political views? Now, if you're married to somebody who's on the pay, I don't know if she's on the payroll or not, um, but if she's spiritual advisor, that's that's like, you know, maybe you need to excuse yourself from the band. Sorry, I didn't mean it so bluntly there, but um, if the band has a mission not to be political and you're, you can't help but be political, then uh, you have a Donald Trump problem at that point. And Neil Sean and the media, by the way, is going to exploit this. The media does not like Donald Trump, if you haven't noticed, right? <laughs> and anybody who is being intellectually honest is going to see that. The bias against Trump is insane. So if you go back to an article, and this came out in December, it says here, two founding members of the band Journey are in a legal dispute after the keyboardist <laughs> performed at Donald Trump's estate. The band's guitarist, Neil Sean, has sent a cease and desist letter to his bandmate, Jonathan Cain. By the way, they spelled Cain wrong. It's, um, they spelled it like candy cane. It's C-A-I-N, uh, like what, the mayonnaise? I think Cain's, was it Cain's mayonnaise? I don't see that stuff anymore. Maybe it's gone, or potato chips or whatever. Anyway, I don't remember. Um, well, I do, but I don't remember how long ago those products were on the shelves. Maybe it's because there's a supply chain issue right now and they're not making it anymore. It might have been years ago. I'm sure somebody will reach out to me and tell me that I'm wrong about this. All right. Kane, who is keyboardist in the band, is married to Donald Trump's advisor. OK, so they just put it out there and people read it. By the way, this is like mainstream media news and you know what they do all day long their algorithms will just guide people along and people can't think for themselves it's just an awesome thing to watch right um anyway kane performed um their songs now i don't know how many songs he did but he's this might be wrong because i've only seen don't stop believing but he says here or they say that uh they perform the songs at the America First Policy Institute's experience in Gala at uh, Mar-a-Lago last month. In the letter, Sean said that Kane had no right to use the band's songs for political endeavors and that it was harmful to their reputation. The band, who are due to go back on tour uh, in January, thought that it was February, but isn't like next week, right? Are most famous for their 1981 hit, Don't Stop Believing. Of course, they're going to mention that. In a letter reported by Variety, Sean wrote, although Mr. Kane is free to express his personal beliefs and associations, when he does that on behalf of Journey or for the band, such conduct is extremely deleterious to the Journey brand as it polarizes the band's fans and outreach. Journey is not and should not be political, he continued. His politics should be his own personal business. He should not be capitalizing on Journey's brand to promote his personal, political, or religious agenda to the detriment of the band, he added, regarding the performances. And uh, Kane says, Sean is just frustrated that he keeps losing in court and is now falsely claim claiming the song has been used at political rallies. Well, um... <laughs> The comeback is interesting. I don't know if that comeback was accurate. I know Neil Sean is frustrated uh, about losing in court. Um, you know, he settled with Perry or Perry. There's there's more to that story, by the way, with Steve Perry and the trademarks. There's more to it because the way it was settled or resolved, it said with prejudice. And I'm not a legal scholar, but um, there's something to that word, and I'm going to have to do some research on it. I'm just talking about music, and here I am worried about, you know, legal matters. Maybe I need to have Jay Seculo on. Anybody know Jay Seculo? Have him reach out to me. That would be great to have Jay on, American Center for Law and Justice, ACLJ. Anyway, and a great musician, by the way. 
plays drums, I think, right? Jay Seculo plays drums in the Jay Seculo band. Um, okay, so it goes on here. However, Sean disagreed with this online saying, I've won one case in court with Kane, and the residing one has not been heard yet. Sean also tweeted saying that his bandmates' actions could uh, make them lose fans. They are already in a feud over the usage of the band's credit card, with Sean claiming he has been denied usage, reports the BBC. Now, the credit card thing, <laughs> Neil spends too much money. Neil says he doesn't have access or didn't have access to it for many, many years. But beyond those issues, um, the politics here kind of started this whole ball rolling. Now, there may have been all this other drama behind the scenes with the band's finances and with the trademarks and all these other issues. Um, but honestly, folks, politicizing a band that wasn't ever political it is really not a good thing to do. It just isn't. And in that regard, I do kind of side with Neil Sean. If Journey had done this political album where they were talking about freedom and liberty. Now you could say, oh, they just released Freedom, Dave. I mean, but it's generic. There's no, there's a couple of references to getting back to the way things used to be on the first single. Um, but then they do a whole video where they've got their little cartoon characters freaking out and wearing face coverings and all. And it's just like, it's, it's a creepy video. If you go and watch it, it's just, I don't like it. And I was telling these guys they should do an animated video but what they should do is go back and do animated videos for some of their um, better known songs. Like there's never been an official music video for Don't Stop Believing." Talk about an opportunity to earn some revenue. Of course, you have to have Steve Perry sign off on that. Good, good luck there. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, when you introduce politics, and by the way, Steve Perry has said, hey, I don't want my songs being used in this way. I guarantee it, Steve Perry, if this went more extreme, that Steve Perry would get involved as well and say, hey, I don't want political candidates using my songs. The governor of Arizona had trouble with Tom Petty for uh, I Won't Back Down. I mean, constantly, D. Snyder is complaining all over the place. My buddy D, such a free speech um, purist, right? <laughs> Not, but anyway, he hates it when uh, we're not going to take it as being used at political rallies. And then he says, well, I, you know, I can't stop them. Now, that's a, a little tacit admission there that somebody might download the song. Somebody might actually purchase the song so they can have it for themselves. Um, and it might make the band a few bucks. Right. So in that case, I'm thinking, chill out, dude. But when it comes to the band in general, and you've got people in the band who are that close where you can bring people up on stage, Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, Kimberly Guilfoyle and the aforementioned Carrie Lake there, and they do a chorus. In fact, I think a couple of these, um, I don't wanna call them news outlets, but a few people have kind of quoted me out there in articles, the way I describe it is the chorus of, Carrie Lake, Kimberly Guilfoyle, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, sounding great, by the way, as backup singers, <laughs> but very inappropriate, folks. It's just, it is. And Donald Trump is always going to be a polarizing figure. You know, if Donald Trump was this humble um, politician, this not very bombastic character, um, it would still be wrong but it would get a lot less attention, I think. And maybe if Neil was somehow connected to this politician in some way, it might be a little better. But at that point, the band would be advocating. They'd just be out there saying, hey, um, if you like Journey, then you should really like this political candidate. It just causes all kinds of difficulties for the band. And in some cases, it might actually cause difficulty for the political candidate. You know, it just could. 
Because now look at Journey's reputation. <laughs> Donald Trump, do you really need another scandal in your life? You know, you got Journey now as uh, your 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 band, and and things are happening uh, with them. And again, it always looks like, hey, when's Donald Trump going to release his taxes? Well, he did. Nobody seemed to care after he did that. I mean, I'll be the first to say the guy has been absolutely abused by the news media uh, for the last, what, six, seven years now. And it's ridiculous. But it's also ridiculous, too, if you're a rock band and you put all your eggs in that very controversial basket. And I just wouldn't do it. Unless, of course, I'm Roger Waters, and then that's okay because people expect it. I've built my brand off the fact that my albums are political, my concerts are overtly political, the visuals, everything I do is political. When you go see Journey, it's just a light show and Arnell running around the stage trying to hit those high notes. And uh, some people just want to decompress. They just want to go and listen to the music and not think about the politics. So anyway, folks, um, if you're buying tickets for Journey, it's a great idea because you're going to get two shows in one. You're going to get the music part of it, and then you're going to get the uh, facial expressions, the dirty looks, and possibly some onstage um, fisticuffs, or or maybe <laughs> maybe not. Maybe you'll see a middle digit here or there from one guy to the other. I don't know. It's absolutely amazing. I've, I've never heard of this in any band where two guys who are literally at war with each other on a number of issues, and they're going to stand on stage together, and they're going to perform the music. And they had to pray over Jonathan Cain because... Who knows? Uh, hopefully they also prayed for his safety, that he doesn't get clocked by an, you know, an uppercut or a, a left hook from Sean or just, you know, a Pete Townsend move with a guitar. We, we don't know what's going to happen up there. All right. I'm having a lot of fun here and you should, too. By the way, check out Chaos and Color by Uriah Heap. Great band. They released the album today. That's all I could say. It's it's good music. It'll get your mind off this uh, journey Donald Trump problem, which probably isn't going to go away anytime soon. I think this band will break up, and uh, I'll make predictions on that at some point. And it could be this year. We'll see. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Patreon and uh, memberships over on YouTube. I really appreciate all of you, and I will see you soon.